One of the fun things to our mind of going cruising is land exploring. And sometimes that involves renting a car. Sometimes it involves renting a car with friends that you've made. And sometimes it involves renting a car and focusing on certain things that those friends really want to see, but also happen to be a highlight of the particular island you're exploring. Hi, I'm Nika Waters, and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. We're going on a distillery tour. Because Martinique, 410 square miles, 11, maybe 12 or 13 distilleries, one car, four people. How many distilleries can we visit? Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Spotless Stainless, the safe, fast, and easy way to remove rust from marine stainless steel and fiberglass. Brush on, wait 30 minutes, and rinse off this environmentally friendly gel for a like new shine. No scrubbing required. Brush on Spotless Stainless, remove rust. It's that simple. A Practical Sailor Best Choice Award winner, Spotless Stainless is available at spotlessstainless.com and Amazon. Use discount code GALLEY for 20% off your order of $50 or more at spotlessstainless.com. Say goodbye to stubborn rust stains. I'm sure that some of these distilleries that we went to see were using spotless stainless or something like it because some of their equipment was just beautifully maintained and nice and bright and shiny. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Martinique, the best rum in the world and that's rum spelled R-H-U-M, and that matters. But the best rum in the world is arguably made in Martinique. It's got its own AOC designation. That's an Appellation d'Origine Contrôlée. Sorry for my French accent. That means that this rum was produced in a very specific region and exhibits a specific quality and style. I think actually the only other place that I've ever seen an AOC designation is with wine. And I'm not sure that any other rum, be it R-U-M or R-H-U-M in the world, has such a pedigree. When we rented a car with our friends on the sailboat Anki in Martinique, one of the things we knew we were going to do was go around to distilleries. Jamie is a real fan of rum agricole, which is made from fresh sugarcane juice instead of molasses. And that's the specialty in Martinique. He even used to collect bottles of this stuff when he was living in Taiwan. And apparently the party, when he moved to the States, because he couldn't bring it with him, the party was epic. I can only imagine. He's working on us, trying to get us to appreciate the finer points of this stuff, which our general less charitable reaction to this so far is rocket fuel. He's got his work cut out for him. But back to renting the car. With Martinique and this island being so vast, comparatively, having a focus and something that you're going to do to be able to take you moving around from place to place is a great thing to do. Jamie, with his knowledge, looked and he said, all right, these are the four distilleries that we want to see. There are 11 for sure. And depending on what list you look at, there are 12 or 13 distilleries on the island. We didn't want this to turn into a forced march. We had a secondary list in case we went faster than we expected. But the roads are not simple. There are other things to see. There are other things to just kind of get caught up in doing. We wanted to go look at the East Coast in case we wanted to cruise over there. We hadn't planned on massive traffic as being a sticking point. And maybe we shouldn't have started the day toward the marina boatyard area known as Le Marin because the town was in the process of switching over all the one-way roads all the while there's some major road repair happening and this combination routed every single person who wanted to get on the main road to the capital city of Fort de France through small streets and through a stop sign. For those of you who are wondering if roundabouts are more efficient, I can promise you roundabouts are far more efficient. That's a totally different conversation. Still, when we started this, I was thinking four distilleries, we're going to get bored, We will have seen the same thing. They're all going to look the same. Boy, was I in for a treat. Because no, they're not all the same. The first one we went to is called Trois Rivières. It's not one of the larger or well-known ones. In fact, the entrance sort of, you kind of needed to really look where you were going. And in fact, we went past it before and then had to do a U-turn to get back to go in. We parked. We got out. 
Now, the equipment was not operational, but we sort of missed somehow the sign that told us that we needed to buy a ticket for the tour in order to even go and see the non-operational machinery. We went poking around and looked at all the machinery anyway. We went for tasting, and the tasting host that was there was very enthusiastic and very friendly, pointing out which rums would be better mixed for tea punch and which ones for sipping only. We did come away with a bottle of Sirotacon, which is the smoky sugarcane syrup that's one important ingredient in tea punch. And by the way, a tea punch? A tea punch is just rum, lime, and Sirotacon. That's it. If you have ice, drop a piece of ice in, maybe a splash of water. But that's the whole thing. And it's served in these awesome tiny little glasses. And it's perfect. It's this tiny little, it's a, it's a tea punch. It's a small little punch. We will admit that that rum was a step up from rocket fuel, and we loved the bright blue color. It reminds me of a Tiffany box, actually. The next distillery we went to is Habitation Clément, which is a renowned distillery. I think you can get their rums. I believe we even saw them on the New Hampshire liquor wine and liquor store website. The grounds are spectacular. It's kind of a bummer because you walk up and you're like, okay, I'm here for the tasting. And they're like, well, if you want to walk around at all, it's 13 euros. We said, oh boy, fine. So we reluctantly forked over our 13 euros each to be able to access the grounds. And the grounds are kind of a sculpture museum, botanical gardens kind of a thing. The distillery, similarly to Trois Riviere, is not operational. But there's also a house that's on the property that you could go and look through. And we decided that we would think about it as more like paying to enter a museum. And somehow that felt a little better than, oh my gosh, we're paying 13 euros a piece to go see a distillery. One of the things that I think if any of us had known ahead of time, we didn't remember. But this location, yes, this distillery location, hosted a high-level summit meeting between Francois Mitterrand and George H.W. Bush back in 1991. Imagine a meeting in 2023 between two heads of state on a small island at a distillery. I think that little room, because we saw the room where the summit happened, I I can't even imagine that happening right now. There would be so much outcry from all different kinds of angles. The sculpture garden was bizarre. The path was well manicured. The house offered a glimpse into the life of the rich and the well-heeled, supported completely by the labor of enslaved peoples, for sure. And then came the tasting room. Maybe we should describe this as the precursor to the tasting room, even though it was called degustacion. This room was worth every penny, in our opinion, of the admission price. It was brand new. And people who commented on an Instagram post of mine said that it hadn't been there even in 2021 or maybe even 2022. It was a brand, brand new room. And it was lit in a way that was reminiscent of a high-end jazz bar. And the centerpiece was this curved kind of S-shaped table with 12 or maybe 20 copper-colored vase-shaped pipes that looked almost like copper, I don't know, flowers with with a cone on the end of it looking out. And next to each one of these 12 copper face pipe things was a button. Press the button with your nose in the cone thing, and a puff of scent came out. The first one we hit, we started screeching. We were so excited. It's like smell of vision Each one had a different flavoring that goes into the rums. And next to each one of these things was an openable book that told what the flavor was which rums use that flavor, and a recipe card. So we sniffed each one and called each other over with excitement. We grabbed every single recipe card. And that wasn't all that there was to see in the room. There were displays about the history of the distillery, videos introducing different bartenders and their favorite recipes. And as we walked down the stairs to get to the actual tasting room and the place where you could buy the rum, There was a wall of rum bottles. It was pretty spectacular and totally worth it, in our opinion. 
The tasting itself, though, it was a bit of a letdown. I think that sometimes if you get the right person, that makes your tasting far more enjoyable. And the guy who did ours was bored. He was checking the time on his phone, talking to colleagues. He wasn't engaging with us. He didn't give us a whole lot of information or not much excitement about the rums that he was pouring. We didn't love the rums or the tasting experience. So go to Habitation Clement. Maybe your experience will be better in terms of the person you get offering the tasting. Maybe you'll like the rums better. We didn't love them. We kept going. We stopped to have a picnic lunch overlooking the water, and then we stopped at St. James Distillery. And this was absolute tops on Jamie's list because he loves these rums. The first new thing with this one is that it's a working distillery. You could smell the fermenting cane juice hanging in the air, and the trucks were beeping and moving around the property. You weren't allowed to go through the distillery at all because it was working and they didn't want anybody going there. And the tasting counter itself really felt like a neighborhood hangout, as opposed to the first two places that we went, where it was just high-end Parisian fashion, lots and lots of of tight clothing and high heels and and very made-up people and everybody perfectly coiffed. This one was frequented by locals wearing t-shirts and jeans. There was a lot of talking and laughing. The bartender was offering to make tea punch as part of the tasting. Lots of people were buying the rum. The tasting was helpful enough, but we clearly weren't regulars, and this was a little bit to our disadvantage. We didn't buy anything. We didn't love the rums, but we also felt like maybe we had enough rum agricole to keep us occupied for the next few years. And anyway, if we change our minds when we're in Martinique, you actually can buy this stuff in every single grocery store and convenience store all over the place. It's getting late in the afternoon. We're still driving, seeing incredible scenery and lots and lots of lush greenery and mountains and going over to the East Coast and checking out the possibles of anchorages over there. But we decided we were going to hit one more. We're going to go up to the northeast corner to a rum factory called Rum JM. We wound our way off the highway for the first time all day, really. And we passed cows and sugarcane fields and a whole lot of banana plantations. By the way, did you know that banana plantations, they wrap the bananas in plastic bags? Little hint, I bet you didn't know that. We had just started looking at each other wondering if we had missed a turn, kind of like with Trois Riviera the first time. And the road curved. We were absolutely in the middle of the jungle. And a huge red sign read Rum J.M., What an arrival. Like at St. James, this distillery was in operation. There was so much sugarcane juice and steam in the atmosphere, we joked about being able to taste it on our skin. And yes, you actually could. When you went back to the boat, you could taste it on your skin. The setting was spectacular. Lush green foliage overhead, bright flowers at eye level, and a picturesque river down below. They used the water from the river for the rum. And when you went for the rum tasting, they even had paper cups and you could taste the water from the river during that tasting. This was the first place that we went, really, that you had free access and an easy, easily guided tour. Jeremy picked up a map at the Welcome Center. Didn't cost anything, but the tour took us everywhere, from the crushing section to the fermenting vats, and everything in between. There's a steam turbine still working. There was a rudimentary version of the smell-o-vision that we had seen at Clement. The tasting itself was friendly and informative. No pressure to rush, no pressure to buy anything. When we asked them what things were available only at the distillery, they said, well, actually, the guy who owns the distillery also owns one of the branches of grocery stores around the island, so you can buy everything in the grocery stores. Absolutely no pressure. It was a spectacular way to end the day. I was really surprised at how different each spot was and how different each rum was. It still largely tastes like rocket fuel to me, although Jeremy has become a tea punch aficionado. I'm not sure that we need to visit the other seven on the island, 
But I don't know. We saw so much different stuff with these four. Maybe we'd see a whole lot of different stuff if we went to the rest of them the next time we go to Martinique. Along the way of this focus of our island exploration, we saw the East Coast, the mountainous interior, the city. And yeah, it's a big island compared to some of them. It's awfully small compared to a lot of other places. And there's a lot packed into a relatively small piece of land. I encourage you, even if you don't think you love a thing, find somebody who does and get them to take you along. And it's a great way to focus land exploration if you're on one of these islands. I can't wait to share an anchorage with you. Maybe we'll pour you a tea punch. Or maybe we'll just toast to our good fortune at being able to be together and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We love hearing from our listeners. We love it when you leave us a review. We love it when you share us with your friends. We love it when you don't forget to subscribe. We certainly hope we're helping you. Our whole goal with Boat Galley is to make it all about making boat life better. Have the most spectacular weekend.